Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how to prep uh, some pages in your sketchbook. Um, I gave you a bit of a step-by-step -step on the watercolor, um, but this is a little bit different kind of paint. So what you're going to need is you're going to need a, uh, a scrap sheet of magazine paper to serve as your palette. And then you're going to need a second magazine sheet. You can also use paper towel for this. And what you're going to do is you're just going to, like, scrunch it up. Um, and you, you want, like, a very textured area, like this right here. So point straight up. So um, we're going to be prepping pages. Um, so how, how you can think about this is almost like uh, color coding your process portfolio. Um, so you can see I did a two-page spread right here. Uh, it, this is dry now. It took about maybe 10 minutes. And then I've got, I'm going to do the same colors here. I'm going to do the same colors here. Um, and then I have like a new section. So we're going to be using temper paint. And um, I'm going to leave uh, a box of paint with the uh, coverage person or the substitute for you guys to do this. Um, and you're going to want to pick colors that, that kind of relate. So I picked this, like, peach color and uh, this green. Um, and it's nice because this stuff dries pretty flat. Um, so you can draw on top of it. And, again, we're prepping these pages to then go and take notes on. Uh, so I picked a lighter color and a bit of a darker color because I'm hoping that the light is going to balance the dark. Um, you don't want to pick... Uh, super dominant colors, because again, we're going to use this. Uh, it, it's a process portfolio, so we need to be able to see notes and annotations and uh, names of artists and, and stuff like that. So um, be wise with your colors. That's why in the, the watercolor um, side, I did like a brown and a yellow, and I washed it out pretty good. So uh, be careful of intense colors. Uh, it's just one, one warning I can give you. So I'm going to demo the technique. So I've got my palette here, and I'm just going to take a little bit of this peach color, and I'm going to take a little bit of this green color. Now, you don't necessarily have to mix them together, and I'd rather you take small amounts of paint at first than big amounts, um, so we're not wasting paint. And I'm just going to take this crumpled up, and I'm going to work while they're wet, and I'm just going to dab. And I'm going to dip into the, to the lighter color. And what I'm hoping is I get an interesting mix. Now, if you're picking colors that are, like, similar to one another, so if they're analogous, um, or even, like, blue and red and stuff like that, they'll make, like, a nice purple color. And you got to kind of work a little fast because you want to be able to hit the page while this is wet. And you can also just sort of rebunch it up. You can organize your colors differently. Like you can see, I dipped into the... The peach color there. Now, this isn't super wet paint. Um, it's got a little bit of body to it, so it's going to stand up. And it is going to dry kind of quick. So you do have to work a little bit faster. And I'm just blotting with this. And, and if, if, like, this starts falling apart on you, uh, then, yeah, go ahead and get another uh, another sheet of magazine paper. But the beauty of this compared to... Uh, paint brushes, which I think I, I put this on the um, the handout, but uh, it's not a threat. It's a it's a guarantee. If I come back and I see paint brushes floating in the sink, I'm taking it out on everybody. So you guys are going to have to kind of police each other. Um, you know, I spend good money on supplies for you, so finding paint brushes just kind of floating around the sink, it's not going to happen. Um, now, I am going to try to kind of go over this. I'm going to add a little bit more green. Um, and I'm going to stick with these colors. Um, this stuff is not, it's pretty durable. So I'm not worried about going right up to the spine. And I'm just trying to cover, I mean, a little bit of white paper here and there is not going to be bad. Um, but what I'm trying to avoid is like super bare and thin spots. Yeah, I'm going to have to write on this, so I'm going to add a little bit more of the peach, and I'm just blotting. That's it. That's all I'm doing. Now, obviously, my next page is going to be the same color combination, and this whole six-page section 
is going to be that color combination. So it makes a nice organizational tool, but it also looks good. It, you know, it shows that you are designing your process portfolio, and then it's just not some whole hum blank sheet of paper, right? And that, that's sort of the important thing because the IB loves intention, you know, and we're always, as art students, trying to be designers as well. So this is a really fun way to just knock some space out in your sketchbook. Now you can see this paint's actually starting to set up here towards the edge. Um, this paint does not need to be 100% dry. It can still be a little cold, not wet. So if you touch it and it's wet, like this area here, not wet. This area here, wet. So when this dries, so you'll feel it, it'll be cold to the touch if it's still uh, a little bit dry, you can then move on to the next pages. You just want to avoid them sticking together. Um, so one neat little trick for that is um, you can take another sheet of scrappy magazine paper and just simply put a little ball and now you can turn your page. Now you can paint on this one here, and yeah, you'd have to go back. You know, this one could be done. You'd have to go back to get this, but by the time you're done with this, the chances of these being dry is pretty good. So that is the second textural element that I'd like you to add to your process portfolio. I hope the little video helped you, um, and I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you when we get back.